So it seems like everybody is just talking about how to achieve your dream career, how to achieve your goals, how to achieve happiness, right? And we're kind of disillusioned into thinking that there's this concept of happiness awaiting there once we achieve certain things, right? Once I have my dream job, then I'll be happy. Once I have enough money, then I'll be happy. But not so many people are talking about life after success. And I think that's a problem. We're all running like maniacs, chasing success and prestige. I mean, like the self-help industry alone is like a $12 billion industry. So then the question is, what happens after you achieve your life goals, right? So people actually expect themselves to be very, very happy after achieving them but like quite on the contrary a lot of times you know people feel directionless and even lost because goals are initially there to give you a sense of direction right and once that goal that was driving you gets like taken away it's like this emptiness almost that follows with it right and this is something that i've been really thinking about honestly for the past couple of months because i'll be transparent i've reached a point in my career where i'm very happy and i'm becoming more and more stable so i can afford to reflect what i've been doing the past 20 years and so a lot of you know that i come from a ballet background right and i always wanted to become a dancer and i actually achieved that after like a lot of work and years and so now it's like this 20 years of hard work uh, coming into fruition almost and so then you think that there's like this glorious view from the top of the mountain right and well you know i wouldn't say there wasn't there was but what astonished me really was that this euphoric feeling only lasted for about like one or two months maybe three months. So let's just think about that for a second. 20 years of constant work every single day from day and night and two months of satisfaction. That's not much, you know? And so what happened was that as soon as I achieved my lifelong goal, I somehow got used to the circumstance and this kind of initial excitement wears away and that becomes a new normal, which actually is quite normal if you think about it from the hedonic treadmill perspective, right? So the hedonic treadmill is a theory in psychology where basically people return to their baseline level of happiness regardless of what positive or negative events happen to them. And you know, that's just part of human nature because it gives us the possibility to adapt to different situations and environments, right? Like it's homeostasis basically. It's, it's like this self-regulating process to maintain stability in environments that keep on changing. It's, it's kind of like when we're hot, we sweat and, you know, our body is trying to regulate its temperature. It's exactly that. And, you know, the hedonic treadmill effect is completely that. Anyway, so I would say that this theory actually explains exactly what I went through and what many other people actually go through, but they just don't even talk about it. And I think we as a society are partly to blame because like, look at all those Instagram photos, right? I mean, I'm also part to blame, I'm, but if you really think about it, it's actually quite dangerous because it disillusions us into thinking that there's this dream world out there, like quit your nine to five job and just go traveling and everything will be rainbows and butterflies, but that's not how things work, right? It's really just like an illusion that we're sold. And I think this, passion economy has many good sides but there also needs to be this balance of positive and negative elements because you can't just be euphoric all the time because like your body is basically gonna crash so then the question comes like is it pointless to seek happiness right well i think it depends maybe it depends on how you define happiness but i think maybe it's not necessarily the right question to ask and the right question to ask is what should we then be seeking after right and i think the answer is meaning and then i started to ask myself well what is the difference actually between happiness and meaning right because it's not necessarily synonymous. And there was an answer to that. Basically, there are two types of happiness that psychologists really refer to. The first one is hedonic happiness, which is basically pleasure and enjoyment. And then there's 
eudaimonic happiness which is meaning and purpose and the thing is if you're just gonna go after pleasure and enjoyment you're gonna end up completely stuck on the hedonic treadmill right because it's shallow and i think our society is again partly to blame because we don't give enough attention to the second kind of happiness which is eudaimonia or meaning right which is exactly what we need we need this very strong pillar in life which will last longer whereas chasing hedonism is like building a traditional Japanese house out of wood and paper, which is very beautiful, obviously, but like an earthquake hits and everything just like crashes. I mean, you know, I saw that happen in, in 2011. I was there in Japan and it's completely catastrophic, you know, and that can also happen with our lives as well if we are just chasing hedonism. So that's why I've always said that, you know, for me, becoming a dancer is, you know, for me, a me, what are they doing? <laughs> becoming a dancer for me is like a means as opposed to it being like this end goal. And so what that really means is becoming a dancer is only a tool to pursue your bigger meaning or purpose, like whatever that may be. And the same could be said for other goals for other people, right? It's just a tool for you to pursue your bigger meaning. And that's really, really important because, well, first of all, if you have a bigger meaning, there are so many other ways that you can actually achieve that meaning other than to, in my case, be a dancer. So even if I can't become a dancer, it's not the end of the world, right? Like I've seen a lot of people fixate on small things like, oh, I need to win gold medals. Oh, I need to win this Olympic game, which is okay, it's not small, but it's just one thing in your life. And your overall contentness in life doesn't really depend on this gold medal, right? But I've seen a lot of people fixate on that. And I would say in that case, what they've forgotten actually is why they're even doing that in the first place. And so then second, uh, it's really important to have this meaning because like I said at the beginning, even if you do achieve your goals, you'll still have something to look forward to once you achieve that, right? And there is actually a lot of like psychological evidence surrounding this that show that when you pursue hedonism, it's actually short term and you're never really satisfied. But when you pursue eudaimonia, the effects are comparatively longer. So yeah, that's kind of my takeaway or lesson that I learned after 20 years of, you know, sacrificing a lot for my dream job, uh, working day and night, really traveling across continents and being very, very lucky also to achieve that i mean please don't get me wrong i'm not saying like don't pursue your dreams or don't pursue you know your dream career or forget about happiness that's not what i'm saying in this video but what i'm saying is that we should all be more attentive enough to see what's actually on the other side of those dreams or goals or happiness and to have like a long-term meaning because without that it's so easy to lose focus in the very small things and we all need a very strong foundation so yeah that's about it very long video maybe uh, a lot of concepts in there maybe a little bit of a mismatch because i was just like ranting on but i hope this video helped you uh, to gain a unique perspective and maybe you can use it as a guide too. Thank you for watching until the end. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!